Hey, hey, Lauren here. Let's talk about activist athletes, specifically hammer thrower, is that right? Weight thrower? Hammer thrower Gwen Berry. Now, if you are not into sports, like I clearly am not up until a week ago, there's a good chance you had never heard of Gwen Berry, but recently she made headlines because of this photo, which showed her turning away from the flag, the American flag, while the anthem was playing. In interviews afterwards about the incident, Berry, according to the New York Post said, quote, it was real disrespectful. I didn't really wanna be up there. Like I said, it was a setup. I was hot. I was ready to take my pictures and get into some shade. All right, so how you can say that playing the national anthem at a sporting event is a setup when, I mean, from what I'm told, that's actually a regular occurrence, doesn't really make sense to me, but Barry has also gone on to clarify that she actually believes that the American anthem specifically is disrespectful to black Americans because of its references to slavery. And before we get into that whole headache of a conversation, I do want to remind you all that if you are not yet following me on Locals, I do have my own exclusive community there, which you can find by going to laurenchen.com. If you've been following me for a while, you may have noticed that depending on what I'm talking about, my videos may be more or less likely to be recommended to you or to even show up in your subscription feed. And that is not by accident. The YouTube algorithm, just like the Twitter or Facebook algorithm, they there are some things that they would rather people not discuss, especially if they come from a right-wing perspective. What's great about locals though, is that they let users decide what they do and do not want to see. So if you're following me on locals, which I hope you are by now, that means you're going to see my posts regardless of what I'm talking about. And that is why on local specifically, I have posted videos where I talk about, I mean, I don't even want to say it, but whether I'm getting the jab or not and my reasons for that, things that I would not be able to get away with on YouTube. And in addition to that exclusive content that I'm posting on my locals on the site, you can also feel free to share stories that you think I or everyone else in the community might be interested in. And you also have the option of supporting the content if you choose to. So again, that is laurenchan.com. I hope to see you there. All right, now back to Barry. Did you know that the American national anthem is actually disrespectful to black? people because that is what she's arguing. She's been reported as saying, quote, if you know your history, you know the full song of the national anthem. The third paragraph speaks to slaves in America, our blood being slain all over the floor. It's disrespectful and it does not speak for black Americans. It's obvious, she added. There's no question. Now the third stanza of the national anthem is rarely ever sung. It's usually just the first part. So for those who aren't familiar with it, here is the piece of text or the lyrics that Barry is referring to. The lyrics read that and where is that band who so vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. So after looking this up, because I wasn't even very familiar with this part of the anthem, like I said, it's just not sung very often, but there's actual debate among historians about whether this refers to African-American slaves or not. As Chris Wolf writes about the debate surrounding those lyrics, quote, Francis Scott Key, who wrote the anthem, was happy to see former slaves who had joined the British as part of their colonial Marines getting slaughtered and killed as they attempted attempted to take Baltimore. Wolf continues to write that many historians agree with Johnson, but some disagree. They point out that he never told anyone what he actually meant, and some historians interpret his mention of hirelings and slaves to reference all of the invading British forces. They say it echoes similar rhetoric used since the Revolutionary War to describe the forces of the kings of England, especially those units purchased from German princes. American writers contrasted these miserable hirelings and slaves with the virtuous all-volunteer citizen armies of America. So does the national anthem of the United States reference the blood of black slaves. I don't know, and frankly, it seems like even historians don't know. But in any case, that's not really the conversation that I'm interested in for the moment. What I want to discuss is whether activist athletes like Barry should actually be using their prominence to convey political messages instead of just, you know, representing themselves and their country. To be clear, and I feel like a lot of people don't actually know this, the International Olympic Committee has actually banned political protests at the games. As Time writes, quote, the Olympics are not and must never be a platform to advance political or any other divisive ends, said IOC President Thomas Bach. Our political neutrality is undermined whenever organizations or individuals attempt to use the Olympic games as a stage for their own agendas, as legitimate as they may be. And personally, I actually think this approach to the Olympic Games is a good idea. The whole point of the Olympic Games is people coming together as countries to compete 
against other countries in a spirit of goodwill. When you start bringing politics into that, it becomes unnecessarily divisive. Not everything needs to be about politics. And for a lot of people, myself definitely included, the Olympics should represent patriotism and the spirit of friendly competition, not political protest. And that's not to say that athletes can never be political or can never voice their political opinions because like everyone else, of course, they are entitled to their own opinions, but are the Olympic Games, specifically your time when you're standing in front of the flag, listening to the anthem, is that the best place to have your political opinions known? And I mean, people like Barry, they've said that, yeah, yeah, it is. She's quoted as saying, my purpose and my mission is bigger than sports. I'm here to represent those who died due to systemic racism. That's the important part. That's why I'm going. That's why I'm here today. And I guess I just don't really understand that mentality. Does Barry standing away from the national anthem do anything, anything at all to help people who've died in the past because of systemic racism or to help people who are supposedly affected by systemic racism today? Not really. I suppose if I'm being charitable here, you could maybe say that, well, it starts a conversation, but because national anthems and flags to so many people represent not a country's history or their government, but rather just the people, more of this conversation has been focused on whether Barry hates America or not, rather than does the national anthem specifically disrespect black people. And I mean, don't forget, she is supposedly standing in opposition to a part of the national anthem that is rarely, if ever, played. To me, personally, this just feels like more performance activism and a way to get attention. And even though Barry has definitely made some enemies because of her theatrics, we can't deny that in an era when people like Colin Kaepernick are signing multi-million dollars with Nike, even if Barry is causing some division politically by doing this, she's probably boosting her political and public profile. And since Barry pulled this stunt, a lot of people have been saying that she should not be eligible to represent America at the Olympic Games. And frankly, I agree with that. Why represent a country and why would you even want to represent a country if you can't even stand for your own national anthem? And again, I will reiterate, Olympics aren't about individuals competing. They are really about countries sending their best and brightest to compete against each other. You are playing for Team America when you go to the Olympics. You are not just Gwen Berry, an individual with her own political opinions. And I mean, that's part of what being a team is about, but it seems like increasingly, people have no concept of what it means to be a part of something larger than themselves. But in any case, I would love to know what you all think about this. Do you think that Gwen Berry should still be able to represent the United States at the Olympics? Are you in support or opposition to the whole concept of activist athletes specifically during these sporting events? Let me know down below. Thank you so much as always. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And again, I hope to see you on my locals at laurenchen.com. Until next time.